All right, we are doing 4K today and the rest of this week until after Christmas. Um, because otherwise, I, I it's a special, so I'm not doing otherwise. But this is the Mandalorian season two review. I believe I did season one. Um, definitely back when things were a little bit uh, different with camera quality and stuff. Um, or maybe not. Maybe it was the beginning of this year. But what we left off is Mando uh, tends to return this Jedi, which was known for Baby Yoda. And I'll still refer to him as Baby Yoda. I don't care what people say. Um, I personally don't even like the name, but I prefer Baby Yoda. But his real his name he was given was Grotru. In the first episode, um, we get Mando going across, come across this town that obviously was a big reference, kind of a spoof towards American westerns back in the 1800s. Um, we come across a sheriff who is played by actor Sir Timothy Olton. And uh, he is wearing Mandalorian uniforms, which turns out later, I mean, uh, armor, which turns out later to be Boba Fett's. Um, now, the second episode comes in, and I like the first episode, and I like most of the episodes, but the second episode, I, I was cringing quite a bit at a certain point, and that was when they're in the ice cabins, and Baby Yoda eats Pretty much a alien um, spider, which is this nasty. I don't like them, and I don't like baby spiders. Um, I don't like spiders in general, but you know, there's more things I don't like more. So I watched that, and then the whole spiders come out. And I mean, I already knew it was going to be that or some sort of alien reference, you know, you know, through the alien franchise because of the look of the eggs and that's where it is. And it kind of was an alien franchise, uh, that. Um, but I, I, I definitely was torn on that, uh, that episode until the end scene where the two ra rebels in the Red Wings, wingers, I had to look up the name. I'm, I'm bad with this kind of stuff, even though I'm kind of grope with super, um, Superman, Star Wars, obviously two huge things, different things. Um, and the, the, how they saved them, and uh, this, I don't know, I just really loved the end, how they, they cumbered, uh, they helped them out, and uh, the way they spoke and stuff, and, you know. Um, episode 3, here's the thing, they introduced three Mandalorians of a different type of, form of, of Mandalorian faith. Now, they got into that, and if you know anything about the, the lore of uh, the Jedis, it's a whole religious thing in the background type of thing. Um, so, I was, it was, I, I'm not really that familiar with them, as I recall, in Star Wars movies, re talking about that, that much. And they didn't go into a huge thing of this, but they did talk about it a little more than usual, uh, the religion aspect of it. Um... Now, I, I, I will say, I, I don't know what the whole controversy is, and that's probably something stupid um, of the actress who plays one of the, the head, uh, the main, um, one of the three. Um, I, I really don't care. It's not, I really just don't care at this point. I really never did till last year, but it is what it is. Um, this is pretty much what I have to say about it. Um, and that's not necessarily at her, that's actually at the people who are complaining about her. Now, again, I don't know the whole controversy, again, don't care to look. But, I felt the, th the third episode kind of, not kind of, pretty much took away from the Mandalorian story. Um, I mean, not, not Mandalorian story in general, but I mean Mando's story in Yoda. I feel like it more focused on, on them. Um, uh, that could just be me, my personal opinion, which it is. Um, but I, I will say that I definitely did love the the blue uh, armored outfits for the Mandalorians. They definitely stuck out more. Um, I, I, I love Mando's uh, armor, but um, I think I like these more. Uh, it is interesting that they have female ones in here. 
and they had because it's disney and i'm not complaining i actually kind of like it that they add females now into uh it so the bad guys in the um that work on the ships uh not the the stormtroopers but whatever you know in the um the hat and stuff there was a head female uh and uh the force awakened there was a female silver uh one that was uh a stormtrooper i didn't care i thought that looked stupid it had enough to do with she's female but whatever um yeah i mean it, it kind of felt like it took away and i, I definitely did like it and i did glad that they did come back to it uh i do not like how her her motives towards the end in the last scene and we'll be getting to the third the, the, the last episode my opinions on that Now, there was definitely some cool stuff in this. There really was. They brought back uh, a famous Jedi from the Star Wars animation, the Clone Wars, I believe it's called. And I'm going to try to pronounce her name, um, but she is played by, or a voice by one lady, and I thought the other lady who's playing her was playing her. She's from, I don't know her name, but she's from uh, Marvel Universe. Um, but the character's name is Ashka Tano. Um, from my understanding of this, and this is one of the, uh, I want to point out that a lot of stuff was spoiled for me, but it did not ruin this at all. Maybe that's just because I'm older, or I didn't really look into that, and I just scrolled by and it showed. Um, but from my yeah, from my understanding is uh, that there's a crossover, I guess, between this and that TV show. I don't know how. I'm a little confused at this point with the Star Wars franchise of where the timeline is for each one. You know, there's just so many Star Wars timelines and the stories and stuff, so it's kind of confusing. Um, I do feel like she. Definitely in that episode. Now, I don't hate the episode, and I don't don't not, not like it. I definitely did like the episode, and I thought she was a very cool character, and I thought they were going to bring her in later on more. They didn't. Um, hopefully, they, they add her more into this, and all other Jedis. Um, but then again, she kind of felt like she um, stole Mando's thunder in this. And they didn't really focus necessarily this time or that's how people perceived it as the first one. And the first one, it was uh, Baby Yoda. Uh, this one is more Mando. And that's great because I was not feeling for... I mean, he was cool in the first one, but I just wasn't focusing on him. And this one I really did. And I definitely liked him more. I think he's a cool character. And... So, another person that they threw in here was, and it wasn't the original actor because there's been like four or five different actors, is as soon as I saw the ship, it had that iconic ship that flew in in the background, I knew it was Boba Fett. Now, I've never been a fan of Boba Fett. Um, I'm aware of him. He had small parts in the original franchises. Um, so, and they were going to originally give him a... A TV show, I guess. Um, I don't know if they star. It's Disney. They probably are. If they use this actor, I'm definitely going to be wanting to do it. Um, the actor name is... Oh, my God. Here we go. Timurul Morrison. He played... Get this. When he was younger, he played... Boba Fett's dad, Jared Fett, in the uh, the Clone Wars movie. Um, when Obi-Wan was younger and we had the lead up to who was going to be Star uh, Darth Vader. The, um, Anakin was going to be Star Darth Vader. Um, Anna Christensen, I think, is the uh, guy who plays uh, uh, Darth Vader when he's not Darth Vader. Ah, oh, man, he, he, when he came in and with that club, he flat out just destroyed violently all those stormtroopers. And I have to say, I was just pumped up during it. I, I loved his character. I definitely, he made me, believe it or not, a huge fan of Boba Fett. I definitely love Boba Fett now because of him. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, he he was awesome. He was an awesome character. I definitely was was really excited, and I definitely want, believe it or not, like some merch of uh, Boba Fett now. Uh, they sell it, obviously, but um, now we come to the, the eighth episode of this. All of it was good up until the eighth episode for me. Now, what I'm referring to is a couple of things. One, um, the guy who plays Lord... Let me look his name up. Okay, I spelled it wrong. Google gone. Obviously not his name. My bad. My spelling sucks, as you know. Um, I was expecting a whole lot more from how they portrayed him in the first one that he was going to be this, like, vicious Sith kind of lord type of guy. Well, not Sith lord, but, you know, in that category of this vicious killer. And he was going to be, you know, this ruthless badass. Um, and I was also expecting him to have uh, a whole huge fight scene. They had a fight scene, but it just didn't fit. I mean, it just felt, um, it fit, but it just didn't. It felt lacking of, of, of what I was expecting from him a lot. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Um, but what really just ruined the episode 8 for me was the CGI of the deaf robots. Or deaf uh, troopers. It was like really glossy. It looked so fake. It was it was this so distracting. I didn't like it, and and they it was. I I I I really didn't like it. I'm sorry to be a hater, but I definitely didn't like it. Definitely the story was a bit because of that and how uh, the idea of these stormtroopers are kind of like. Uh, like Terminators type of thing, and I, I, I don't know. I just feel like they, 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 they should have thought that through more, and then more did more, some more uh, CGI better. For the most part, the CGI was great. Um, it was for ninety nine percent of the time, it was great. A little spotty, some spots, but it was great. Um, I, it had a very dark tone. I noticed immediately, like in um, the Solo movie. And uh, unlike I can do that in the theater, in this, I can do this with my computer. I mean, my my TV where I can turn it up brighter. Now, when I thought I was going to do it, I thought it was going to be like exposed looking. But it was just hard to see because there were so many night scenes in there. Um, no, it was actually picture perfect. They definitely did a great job. I just wish they would stop doing the tint thing. It's kind of a bit of annoying to see. Um, but other than that, um, they had... Here's the thing about Disney and Star Wars movies. Um, they have comical in here and they do, uh, not skits, but what do they do? Uh, stick, if you know what that is, if that refers to. Um, in the other films, in Solo, in the, first th in the three sequels under Disney that they made, I hated them because the fact that they they had so many cheesy and just dumb liners and comments and the guy I forgot his name but he's so full of himself in the last Jedi you know he makes these comments and there was this whole thing on the ship in the game with the redhead guy uh you know but that's not what this movie is about what we're talking about now but I'm just saying I am not I'm one of those haters of Disney Star Wars up until I saw the first season Mandalorian. Now they don't do it overly done. There's definitely one part in there, and it's in the third episode where the guys are in the cargo bay and they trap him there because he thinks it's a good diet. Not in there, but in the control room. And so then all of a sudden he, he realizes it and they do a thing to his, you know, shot to his face. And then he just gets swept out. I thought that was the stupidest shit ever. Excuse my language, but I thought that was the stupid. I was like, really? I hope to God that the rest of the show is not like this. And it wasn't. It was, it was good. It was a good move. It was a good show. Would I say this is better than the first season? I definitely say it's a little bit better, but I think, um, don't get me wrong. I, I like both seasons but i like shows that where they try to up every year 
Uh, they tried to up with adding some more uh, uh, Easter eggs, is what it's called. But, you know, it just felt like they were trying too much in a different wrong area. Um, but, again, didn't hate the movie, uh, the TV show. I actually loved it, except for uh, episode 8. That was trash. I'm sorry, but it is, for, in my opinion. Um, the Mark Harmon um, scene, now I'm, I'm assuming he's the Mark Harmon, the real Mark Harmon. They, this, they obviously, whoever it was, if it was a stand-in or if it was Mark Harmon, you can tell me in the comments, but whoever it was, they obviously did the aging CGI, which actually looked good. Um, very believable. Um, it definitely looked a little different than what I remember, but that's because it was like done in the 70s or 80s when he was younger. And then this one was obviously done with more, way more HK, uh, HD and 4K cameras and stuff. Um, however, what they did that I, I kind of did notice, but it's like a little bit of a nitpick and you're not necessarily going to notice it until I say it or you or maybe you will. As you can see, his hands were definitely old. So yeah, I'm, I, that's why I'm more of assuming it's Dark Mark Harmon. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I give this move this this TV show, season two of Mandalorian, four and a half out of five axes. I would have given it a five if it wasn't for. The second, the uh, eighth episode, and the one cheesy joke or two in there. Um, that's just my opinion. This is my review. Don't get mad at me. I personally uh, am, am falling. I'm obsessed with uh, with Baby Yoda, and again, I don't care if what his real name is not Baby Yoda, which is obviously not. But I, I love the series, and I love Mando, and I love uh, Baby Yoda, and. I definitely love the characters in here. Um, so it's definitely going well. I can't wait to then the next season. Um, see what they do with that. Um, I'm hoping it, they, they, it gets better than this season. Um, continuing. But, I, I, you know, I, I love it. So please let me in the comments below. Have you seen this? What you think of it? And uh, do you disagree with anything I say? And please keep it... Um, non-political uh and um please keep it respectful um but yeah i love you all and have a good week have a good holiday and skull